What's up, Avid viewers? The Innocence has hit theaters and Amazon Prime. Does it live up to being a creepy kid movie, or is Innocence really just out of sense? I'm sorry, you guys. I really tried to come up with a good pun. Stick around to find out. The Innocence, which is actually called The Usklidges, is a drama fantasy horror film, and yes, it's a foreign film. Norwegian. What? You hate foreign films? You hate reading subtitles? You don't think it's worth watching because foreigners can't make movies as good as we can? Don't be a racist, uncultured swine just because you have to read some subtitles. Seriously though guys, maybe you haven't given foreign films a chance, but you are definitely missing out. They bring such a fresh and refreshing take to cinema and they are just as good as us. By us, I mean America. The characters just don't speak the mother tongue, and you'll get over it in three minutes. Now that I'm off my soapbox, let's talk about who was involved in making this film, and then a brief content warning. If you want to skip straight to the review, jump to this time in the video. This movie stars Raquel Flakrostow Otum, Alva Ramstead, Sam Ashraf, and Mina Ashim. Unfortunately, they don't have pictures up on IMDb, probably because y'all are a bunch of racists who won't go see this movie, and so they're not famous enough for pictures yet. It's directed and written by Eskel Vat, who is most known for writing The Worst Person in the World, a movie about Amber Heard that did pretty well in award seasons last year. On to our content warning. This movie is technically not rated in America, but based on Singapore, we can call it PG-13, which sounds about right to me. There is some blood, snapped limbs, some disturbing and creepy imagery, and one use of the F word. And we are definitely not in R-rated territory. Still, I wouldn't take your kids to this movie because I wouldn't want them to get any bright ideas and kill you in your sleep. <laughs> The Innocence is one of my favorite movies I've seen this year, and probably my favorite horror movie of all time. Granted, this movie is pretty mild when it comes to horror. It's not demonic, it's not terrifying, there's no jump scares, it's simply unsettling. That's what makes it so great, I think. If you hate horror movies, you could definitely stomach this movie, and you might get to feel that rush of witnessing something slightly paranormal and disturbing without being scared when you turn off the lights. This is one of those movies that is sort of a hidden gem that you'll be excited to tell people about at parties and show it to them, and you'll feel like a part of a club for having discovered this movie. Lower budget movies and more artsy movies sometimes do this thing where they lock down the camera and show you a static, boring shot of something, like a wheat field for way too long. Why? Because it's art, apparently. I was really worried that this movie would embrace that and would just be so slow and boring and only attract a niche audience. But honestly, there wasn't any of that. This movie could definitely appeal to the masses and become pop culture, but I don't think it's going to, which is a little bit of a shame. Now, of course, because of the budget, this movie is a little bit slower, and it's not very grand in scope. It only takes place in and around a set of apartment buildings and in the woods, but I think that's one of its strengths. It's slow, but it's so great at building mystery and suspense and tension that it always keeps you invested in saying, like, what the fetch is happening? Stop trying to make fetch happen. It does a great job of setting up this world of children where it seems like they know something we don't. Ida has a sister with autism, and she does these sort of things to hurt her and it's kind of unsettling until you realize she's doing it out of curiosity because she's really fascinated with her sister she believes she can't feel pain because she never cries or reacts. Then they meet a new friend and she sort of has this telepathic connection with Anna, the girl with autism, and she can feel her pain and give her a voice. Then they meet a boy named Ben who has telekinesis and can make people do things. So they all kind of hang out at the beginning and learn about their powers and it gives off a total Chronicle vibes. I don't know if you've seen Chronicle, but it's about teenagers who get telekinesis and sort of get out of hand with their powers, it's awesome, you should see it. This movie, on the other hand, is different because it's also making commentary on a child's world and how separate it is from reality and how we interpret their ignorance as innocence, but they're honestly pretty capable of doing some horrendous things. I think we will all relate to this movie in a strange way because maybe we all remember doing something horrifying, like pinning down our siblings and torturing them or threatening each other with knives or rocks or dissecting worms, pulling apart other insects and animals. This movie lends an interpretation into those sort of sadistic acts that children do sometimes. And it's really strange to realize, oh my heck, if somebody was filming my playtime as a kid when no one was around, it might just be as creepy as this. Now, you don't have to buy into this idea completely. Like, totally understand, you know, the whole suffer the children to come unto me and their pure innocent innocence. This movie won't make you scared of children. It's just gonna offer a really cool perspective into some of the more twisted things they do when they don't understand completely. When I was younger, I used to imagine throwing grenades everywhere. Like, 
I would be dropping grenades into cars or off of the skywalk or in classes. It was pretty messed up. I want to know some of the things you did when you were younger that were pretty messed up. Comment down below. But you guys, this movie just nails tone and suspense. And I've never seen such great acting from kids. Like, these kids show genuine fear and joy and an interesting mixture of maturity and naivety and curiosity and simultaneously this idea that all kids are connected somehow and there's something that they know about the world that adults don't. Seriously, none of these kids felt like actors. It honestly felt like someone was recording a documentary of a genuine childhood friend group. This movie was not basic or a stereotypical in any way, a common trap that horror movies fall into as they embrace some of these tropes of their genre. There were twists and turns and mysteries and deception and betrayal, and it's tragic at times. You'll feel so many emotions in this movie, and yet you'll be fascinated and almost giddy with how it feels when you're putting the pieces together and figuring things out. While I was watching this movie, I couldn't stop saying, Wow. Wow. I love this. My favorite part, I thought it was so creative, is when Ben gets people to do things they act sort of zombie-like, but then you get to see inside their heads and it's like a nightmare and they're terrified. It was so brilliant because they could have simply just stopped there and been like, nah, he controls people's minds. But instead, they showed us what it's like when somebody's inside your mind taking over. It was so cool. If you typically don't like horror movies, I think you should give this one a shot. I wouldn't even classify it as horror. It's more like a quiet place in terms of fear level. If you haven't given foreign movies a chance before, please do it on this one. I promise you won't regret it. That's why I'm giving The Innocence a buy it on Amazon now. This movie will be so fun to throw on at a party with your friends and watch them go through what you went through the first time watching. And then you get to brag about how you found it. All right, you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you agree with me that this movie was so twisted and awesome? Or are you a racist that hates my stupid face and my opinions? Either way, hit that subscribe button and that bell so I can see your beautiful face in the next video. And as always, mom, thanks for watching. The rest of you, stay average.